All right, what's up everybody? Uh, I'm getting ready to hop on this highway here. You can see, maybe see the highway behind me. And I'm over by Niagara River. And I'm getting ready to uh, take a mini vacation. I just wanted to get away for the day. I've already camped at Allegheny State Park, so I thought maybe I'd just take a uh, drive down there for the day, get some pictures of the fall foliage. And uh, once I do that, I'll probably head home later tonight. I'm not going to do any camping or anything like that. I'm packed really light. Got a backpack. Um, I got a pack on the bike uh, with water, some food, uh, stove, that type of thing. I got my seat. <laughs> That's my solution for the uncomfortable DR650 seat. And uh, just an old chair cushion that I put over the top there. I'm going to see how that works. I'm just kind of testing it out. Uh, right now, it's better than buying a $500 seat, so I'm going to try it out. Outside of that, uh, I'm going to hop on the highway here, uh, start filming, and uh, get this vacation on the road. It's a beautiful sunny day in Buffalo, New York, so my goal is to get out of the city today, right along the scenic byway of Lake Erie, and once I get into the reservation, I'll probably ride through the reservation and into Cattaraugus County and then hit up uh, hit up Allegheny State Park maybe I'm debating whether I want to go in the park or not or just do uh, riding around and, and get some foliage uh, photos uh, I'm not camping or anything like that so I'm kind of debating whether I really need to go into the park or not right now my main goal is just to get on the highway and get out of town get out of Buffalo I got all the cameras charged, I got the phones charged. Alright, let's head out on the highway. Hopefully the sound quality of this video will be halfway decent. I'm doing 65 right now. Uh, I'm gonna get off the main highways as soon as I can. I hate riding the main highways, especially when I'm traveling. If I'm in a hurry, I don't mind it. But when I'm not in a hurry, I just want to take country back roads. I think it's a much more rewarding experience. You get to see parts of America that you don't normally see. There's not a Tim Hortons or Starbucks in every corner. and It's just a, a, a better vibe in my humble opinion. The DR has been running great. I'm hoping there's going to be no problems on the way here or anything. And the way back. That's really what this trip is all about. Just kind of, uh, I think Allegheny State Park's about, about an hour, hour and a half away. And uh, I just want to see what the bike's like riding at a somewhat long distance. I think the next trip I'm going to be taking is out to the Adirondack Mountains. That'll be a full-on camping trip. This is the Peace Bridge to Canada. Usually it's bumper to bumper with traffic and trucks and cars. And uh, The only thing that can come through right now is, I believe, trucks and uh, your vehicles. But they're, they're, they have to have a serious reason to have to come over to the States, I guess. I don't know, man. Beautiful downtown Buffalo. My hometown. Man, traffic's flying. I'm doing 65 and people are passing me like I'm standing still. Nice. Let's get out of the city. I 
hate this merge here. This thing is called the Skyway and it is wicked hairy on a windy day. It's a pretty calm day today. You can see Lake Erie out on the horizon here. This is one of my favorite local rides. When I just want to get around and get away for the day, especially on a really hot day, it, it drops down about 10, 15 degrees along here. It's actually a little colder right now for t-shirts in October, but it's exceptionally warm right now for October too. And this brings us into the city of Lackawanna soon. One of the things I, I got to start working on is I got to put together a tool pouch. All I have is the factory uh, tool set. And before I start traveling distances, I'd like to get together a nice uh, tool pouch so if the bike breaks down, I can kind of work on it on the side of the road. It sucks when that happens, and it sucks even more when you don't have the right tools. And it does happen from time to time. This is the waterfront park. They just redeveloped all this. Nice to get away for the day, hang out by the park here. Those hills out on the horizon, that's pretty much where we're headed for. One of the things I'm working on right now is trying not to overpack. I tend to overpack a lot and I'm realizing less is more. It's a more comfortable ride on a motorcycle. Less stuff to balance. Once you get off-road, which I'm not going to be doing any off-roading, I need back tires. If I didn't need back tires, I'd probably hit some off-road trails out in Allegheny County. Go, on, go over on the Pennsylvania side, right now we're on the New York side. I wouldn't mind hitting the Pennsylvania side. But I don't think I'm going to do that. So this is the city of Lackawanna. Back in the day, this is where all the steel in the U.S. was made. Well, a good chunk of it at least. This is the old Bethlehem steel plant. Growing up, just about all the adults we knew either worked in the steel plant or worked in the Chevy plant or the Ford plant. Buffalo is a pretty industrial town. Buffalo, Lackawanna, it's really should be one city as far as I'm concerned. Then once we get past the Ford plant, we're in Hamburg. And a little bit closer to get off this throughway and start taking some back roads. Pretty excited about taking my first adventure on this bike here. I mean, even though it's a small one, it's only an hour and a half away. I don't know what the mileage is. I should have jotted it down. All right, this is one of my favorite local drives here. There's Lake Erie. We're going to be riding along with Lake Erie probably up to the uh, Cataragus Reservation. I think it's the Cataragus Reservation. It's either the Seneca Reservation or the Cataragus Reservation. I need to get the speedometer checked on this thing. I do the speed limit and everyone blows right by me. I'm actually doing five over the speed limit. I never do the speed limit.
so nice and comfortable. It's supposed to get up to about 80 degrees today. And in October, going into the second week of October, that usually doesn't happen in this part of the country. So this is actually a real treat. Man, it's getting awful cloudy the closer I get to Allegheny. I looked at the local weather in Buffalo. I maybe should have looked into Allegheny County. I hope I'm not riding into a real uh, storm here. That would suck. I think that's the worst part about riding a new bike is getting comfortable with the speeds and the different gears and everything. I always have a hard time maintaining speed limits, like either uh, uh, slower or faster on a new bike. Just because you're not used to the throttle and the gear ratios and stuff like that. I'm finally getting comfortable with this one, but it took a couple weeks. I'm starting to think I should have brought a warmer jacket with me. You can never pack too much or too little of, well too much of, is warm clothes. Because you can always take the warm stuff off, but if you don't have it to put on when you're cold, that's a shitty experience. At least I don't like being cold. I don't know about you, maybe you like being cold. I'm not a fan of the cold. I gotta say, my ghetto seat cushion over the DR seat is actually working out pretty good. I did not want to buy a $500 seat. Even a $300 seat for that matter. But the real thing that held me up wasn't so much the price. Ooh, this is where here's where we want to go, the Seaway Trail. This is a nice ride right here. It's not so much the money right now. It's more about the supply chain issues and having the wafer. However long it's going to be, no place really has time zones or anything, as far as waiting on stuff. There's no time frame. They're like, order now and when it comes in we'll ship it to you. That's wonderful, so I got to wait three months for a seat. So that was part of the reason why I didn't order. I figured it's money better spent on vacations and trips and stuff like that. Sooner or later the supply chain issues will get straightened out. And that's when I'll order a new seat. Unless this cushion works. I'm fine with the seat driving around the neighborhood. It's just when I get on the road when I start to, I took it for about a 45 minute ride. Uh, there and back it was about an hour and a half. And after about the first hour, it, the seat was uncomfortable. I mean it was really uncomfortable. It was like sitting on a, a concrete slab. That's how a lot of people compare it. That's what it feels like. Driving around the neighborhood though, it's fine. I can go all day on the, around the neighborhood taking you no know, stop and starting. So I guess the foliage is starting to peek around the Adirondacks. So next week, I may just hop on the bike one day and throw the tail bag on with the camping equipment. hit up the Adirondacks. I haven't been out there in about two years. And then next summer I'd like to do like Vermont, Maine, Massachusetts, some of the New England states. I love these houses out here. Along this road, they're just sick. A lot of the football players, hockey players, professional sports players and stuff like that. I guess the Buffalo New York celebrities 
live around here. That oh, was pretty cool, a geodesic home. I haven't seen one of those in a long time. It was a really nice one too. Oh, got some construction here. Styles of the rich and fabulous. It's funny because you go from these super nice houses, and then once you get a little further into the lake, it's like the kind of uh, shabbier kind of lake houses, rental property, stuff like that. Summer homes. Seaway Trail. Yeah, if you're ever in this part of town, uh, this part of the country, these by uh, see, they call them scenic byways. At least uh, here they do. New York State. Oh man, check out this Cobra. So we sweet. So yeah, once you hit up these scenic byways, there's like some just great, great scenery. I mean, look at this. This is just incredible right here. Plus you get out of the traffic and everything like that. And I guess from what I understand, this goes right along Lake right Erie. I'd like to see how far it goes one day. I think it goes into uh, uh, Pennsylvania and Ohio probably find out that could be a fun adventure one day just throw the tail bag on and see where this thing actually leads once you get it splits up though once you get to the uh, Cataragas Reservation or the Seneca Reservation whatever reservation it is um, it turns back into highway and stuff like that and that heads into Pennsylvania which is one of the reasons why we're going to probably cut through the reservation. I do have to watch my speed limit here because this is kind of like a, uh, I don't know if you call it a tourist trap or whatever, but the speed, it's not so much a speed trap, the speed limit's 35, 40 miles an hour. But they radar here all the time because it is kind of a high traffic thing for it's 35 miles an hour it is kind of a high traffic thing for people to uh, travel lots of joggers and walkers everyone out on a nice day two three months from now this is going to be all snow and cold and they get lake effect snow here too, which means that the snow picks up. It's way worse than in the city. The snow picks up and it just pummels this whole area with like tons of snow. Here's one of my favorite houses on this on this drive. Man, that's sweet. Look at that view in the backyard. There's another really nice one. I guess you know you made it when you got a piece of property like this. That's pretty freaking cool. I honestly thought the trees would be a little bit more, uh, a little more color in the trees. My understanding is Adirondacks are at the peak right now, which is kind of why I figured we'd start seeing a little more colors out this way. Here's a skater. Starting to get some reds and yellows though, and starting to look nice. Ah. Halloween monster truck, that was pretty cool.
one of the things I love about traveling, I love seeing the different stuff that people do, different houses and different towns. The fun stuff you find along the side of the road as far as like the Halloween monster truck back there, that was kind of cool. And when you come across art installations that people do on the side of the road, That's like a mini castle right there. Check that place out. Pretty freaking cool. Yeah, I'll do a separate video of just some of these houses and this whole byway thing one day. Alright, 40. Yeah, for me, when I'm traveling, I don't mind doing 40, 50 miles an hour on a back road like this. And then, you know, once you really get out in the country, I mean, this is a, a byway, so I mean, it's it's not really meant for, for traveling, it's meant for sightseeing. But, uh, I love the country back roads. I, I like just kind of putting along and taking in the scenery, like this vineyard here. Uh, this is pretty much wine country that we're coming into now. But I just love taking in the sights. So I pretty much know where I'm going right now. I don't have my GPS on or anything like that. Once I get to the gas station on the reservation, I'll probably stop, take a break for a little bit. Then I'll plug in the coordinates for the GPS. I think with the camera footage too, it's weird. I try to move slower, slower now. I gotta be honest, while I'm filming, I'm a little more concerned about keeping my eyes on the road than I am about uh, the quality of film footage that I'm getting. I mean, obviously I want good film footage, but I think I need to do Lakeshore. I'm pretty sure I turned there. That's the nice thing about GPS, too, though. If I, uh, Screw up. I got my GPS, so I'm going to take Lakeshore. Yeah, and you can kind of see where we're getting into... We're getting into... Uh, the cottages now. The summer homes and cottages here. Yeah, I'm 90% positive this is the way I'm supposed to go. I actually found this route when they were doing the set up detours. And I took this one time and I looked where I ended up. So it became part of my regular travel destinations. I haven't been since 2019 maybe. Oh, that's a cool house. It's probably been since about 2019. 2020 was a wash, man. I didn't do anything. I sat around the house, drank whiskey, and smoked pot. Everything that was going on with the... I, I've heard you're not supposed to say the, the sickness, which should not be mentioned, or they screw up the algorithms. So, uh... I'm going to avoid saying the C word. But 2020... I uh, didn't do anything. Very little motorcycle riding. 
just around the neighborhood, very little travel. And uh, that is one of the reasons that I uh, post the hive too. Because on hive I can say what I want. And uh, I like saying what I want. I don't like people censoring me. I can get having a platform say, you know, we don't appreciate hate speech or we don't we don't want this or we don't, you know. But when you start censoring political speech and people's health concerns and stuff like that, I find that questionable. And yeah, disinformation and misinformation is a problem, but censorship is not the answer. Common sense and doing your own research is the proper answer. Relying on the Ministry of Truth is a very, very, very bad idea, in my humble opinion. You decide for yourself, but... I, for one, like to think for myself. And I get that it's more about taking in all the information, and, and that's really what it's about. Taking the information, research it yourself, and come to your own decision and if other people don't want to follow that decision that's fine that's their prerogative and people need to respect yours as well at least that's where I stand with all this and that's my rant for this video so once you go over this embankment here the other side of this embankment is the lake and it's all beach private beaches I guess if you have one of these places you can go on the beach there are some areas up ahead though where you can actually uh, pull over and go to the beach yeah, you can see the, the lake behind there man these are nice places they just built all these I always wanted one of these little cottages over here. Seemed like it would be fun. Now my understanding is I stay right on Lakeshore Road here. See, believe it or not, this is actually changed. All right, I know where I'm at. So here's all the beach clubs and the, uh, these are fun in the summertime. They're usually filled with people. Live bands, music. There's the beach right there. They've got bands right on the beach and everything like that. A lot of fun. I haven't done it in a long time. I'm getting old and turning into one of those old cranky dudes. I'm only happy when I'm on my motorcycle. Although I do love music. Festivals again, hopefully. That'd be good. I wouldn't mind heading up some festivals sooner or later. It's been a long time since I've done a music festival. 53 years old, I'll be the fed. Everyone will say, hey, that guy's the fed. Who brought the fed? Never wanted to be that guy. So yeah, I'll fill up with some reservation gas. Again, see how much gas, how much uh, gas we used on this little bit. This tank on this motorcycle definitely sucks. It's the one thing I don't like about the bike. I really should have just ordered the, the bigger gas tank. I said, oh, I'm probably not going to do any serious riding, distance riding until next spring. You know, I did, I want to do a cross-country trip sooner or later. I'm not sure when I want to do my cross-country trip. I guess when it feels right, I'll just wake up one morning and say, you know what, I think it's time to take that trip. 
that's kind of how I operate. The temperature is absolutely perfect for what I'm doing. Look at that thing. Oh, chipmunk. I don't know if you've seen that or not. The uh, temperature right now is actually perfect. It's not too... It's just cool enough. Or if it's just a little bit cooler, it might be a little uncomfortable. But the sun's out. I got a t-shirt on. I'm not sweating. That's the worst part about a motorcycle in the summertime. When you're distance riding, you get those hot 90 degree days and the sweat's just pouring off you. And I'm going to have to figure out something for my helmet situation. The helmet I'm using right now for this filming and everything like that, it's, for, it's fine for right now. In the summertime, this is my winter helmet. This, this is going to be way too warm in the summer, so I'm going to have to figure out another configuration for summer riding because there is no way I'm wearing I, I wear a half helmet, and I know a lot of people don't like them because they don't give you as much protection as a full face, but, you know, I, uh, I like the half helmet. And I know a lot of people get mad at me when I say it, but if I'm in a state where there's no helmet law, a lot of times I will ride without a helmet. Depends on where I'm at. It depends on the amount of traffic and, and all that. If I'm in the city, chances are I do put on a helmet. Even if I'm in a state that doesn't have a helmet law. But if I'm out on the highway or on a road like this where there's not a lot of traffic, I can go without the helmet for a little bit. I actually drive a little more cautious, I think, without the helmet. Because I know if I fall, I'm really going to hurt myself. <laughs> like the old meme, God forgot to make stupidity painful. If you would have, we'd probably have a lot smarter people running around. But, that rings true with motorcycles. You screw up on a motorcycle once, you learn real quick. I got most of my learning on dirt bikes when I was a kid, and you learn real fast to ride within your ability. That's the nice thing about on-road riding is the only thing you got to worry about is speed. You go out with a bunch of guys and some guys are speed happy and what was that when I was younger? I had, I had a couple, I had one race bike, a GS750. A buddy of mine built it, he used to drag race it at the, at the track and then he got tired of it and I bought it and rode it on the street. That was a lot of fun. I only kept it for about two months though. And uh, got rid of it. Because that bike was going to be the death of me. I knew it. I never regretted it. I always regretted selling the bike just because it was such a cool bike. But uh, I'm glad I did because well, I might not be here today to narrate this video. Alright, well, we're getting deeper in the country now, into the hills. Well, right on the edge of the hills. And uh, we're starting to see some fall foliage, so that's kind of cool. Weed City Limit, I'm going to have to find out about that. They just legalized weed in New York this year. It's one of the things I might stop at a couple places on the reservation and find out what everyone's saying because they're going to tax the hell out of weed. And uh, I'll probably keep getting weed from the people I get it from, but it would be nice to uh, be able to walk into a dispensary, but I'm not going to pay twice as much for it in a dispensary when I can get it off a guy I got it off of for the last 20 years. Cheaper and better quality. Here's a sharp turn right here. This always screws me up on my on my cruiser. And look at all the gravel and everything like that. This is just a nightmare on a motorcycle right there. If you don't know the road. So I think we're right on the outskirts of the reservation right now. When I get to the end of this here, there's a gas station. I'll probably stop there, take a break, put some gas in the bike.
set up the GPS maybe. I do love to twist these though. This is the gas station right here, it sure is. We are now on native soil. I don't know which way these guys are going, so I'm going to go this way. I'm going to see how much gas I need, if any. Dollar forty, that's nothing. Be no receipt. What the fuck is this? Ah, uh, social distancing. Again, with the sickness that should not be named. Alright, well, I guess I'm not going to stop in here. Alright. Um, let's do... Well, there's bathrooms. I'm going to stop and use the bathroom. bars six dollars each I'm gonna have to find out about that if that's still dead I'm gonna buy one 